The Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the story of The Riddle of the Seven Zombies. And right after the story, Blackstone will reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. <laughs> for Blackstone, the magic detective. Do you believe in zombies, Blackstone? Do we, Rhoda? I certainly do. Well, you certainly sound sure of that, Rhoda. I am. Why? What do you mean? I've seen a zombie, Alan. Oh, you're, you're kidding. No, she's not. See that drum there on the wall? That shabby old one? Yes, I see it. What about it? Uh, listen. Why, it's beating all by itself. That drum saved me from being killed by the zombies, Alan. Rhoda, you sound serious. I am. Generally, I can tell when you and Blackstone are kidding, but but this time I'm not sure. Well, I'll tell you the story, Alan. Maybe you'll believe it. Maybe you won't. I don't know what to believe myself. It all started down in San Domingo, where Blackstone and I were on tour. Quite a collection of old magic equipment you found belonging to that old magician, isn't it, Blackstone? Most of it's pretty worthless, but there are a few good things. What are you planning to do today? Oh, I don't know. I thought I might walk up to that old castle on the hill and look around. It looks fascinating. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Rhoda. The natives say the place is haunted by zombies. Oh, come now, Blackstone. You can't expect me to believe in mythical zombies. Nobody's ever known very much about zombies. There may very well be such lost souls. I wouldn't mess around with them if I were you. Oh, I'm not afraid. I won't be gone long. If I'm not back by noon, you'll know the zombies have got me. I started out early and arrived at the castle. It was partially ruined, and I had a marvelous time prowling around through it. It seemed deserted, and yet at times I had a feeling that someone was following me. A feeling that I wasn't alone. I can't explain it exactly. Well, I went around one corner of the building, and... There sat an old man with long white hair flowing over his shoulders. I wasn't even surprised to see him. He looked sort of right sitting there. He had a drum in front of him. So, uh, uh, oh, I was just looking around the castle. I hope you don't mind. Uh, well, I'm not going to hurt anything, you know. Why don't you answer me? You might at least speak to me and tell me to get out. It scares me to have you just sit there. Play to me. Say something. Well, I'll go away if you want me to, but say something. It is no use to speak to him. Oh. He hears not, neither does he speak. Oh. Did no one tell you that you should not have come here? Well, I, I didn't mean to trespass. I just thought I'd look around, that's all. I do not like to have anyone looking around my castle. Well, I'm sorry. I'll just... What's that? What's the mute beating the drum for? Here comes another visitor. This one I see comes into the castle in direct line of the mute's vision. He is beating on his drum to call for the zombie guard. Oh, look. The rocks are opening. Yes, they are opening. Those are the coffins of the living dead. The, the visitor is coming near. He is a stranger to me. I do not like strangers. But my zombies will attend to him. And they would have attended to you had you come in the usual way instead of sneaking in behind Zimla the mute. Watch. People are coming out of the caverns in the rock. Not people. Zombies. <coughs> that man. You've got to say that man. Those zombies of yours are surrounding him. That is what they are supposed to do. Well, they're, they're rushing him toward that cliff. He can't save himself. He can't fight them off. Oh, you've got to do something. He'll be killed. They are at the edge of the cliff now. Oh! Oh, the man's fallen off the cliff. It always happens this way. 
What are you signaling like that for? Listen to the drum now. Oh, they're, they're beating faster. The zombies have turned from the edge of the cliff, and they're coming back. They're coming back. Oh, let me go. No. You are the first who has ever seen the zombies at work, and you shall not live to tell. After my zombies have rested, they shall take care of you. You shall not live to go and spread the word of their work. Are you ready now for the zombies to finish with you? No, no, let me go. Oh, no, that would not be fair to my zombies. It is a long time since I have given them a pretty girl to kill. They will be happy. They will do my bidding for many years to come. Oh, don't signal him. Don't signal to the dead drummer. Oh, don't, don't. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, not the drum. But how else can I call forth my living dead servant? Here they come now. The rocks are opening. They're so white. They move so slowly that they were asleep. But they are strong. Soon you two will plunge over that cliff under the rocks below. <laughs> Another sad accident to someone who carelessly lost their footing on the cliff. They're coming near. They're coming near. Let go of that girl. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank heaven. Take that, you helper. The zombies, they're surrounding him. Like from the zombies. You are trapped, Panciano. Trapped by your own self. But not for long. I'll give the signal for Zimbla to speed the drums and they'll go back to their coffins. He's signaling, but the drums are still beating slowly. The zombies are pushing in ahead of him. Speed, Zimbla. The signal. Help! Help! <laughs> Oh, he's fallen from the cliff. And the zombies are going after him. They're falling, too. And the drum, it hasn't beat the signal to call them back. It will never call them out again, Rhoda. Oh, Blackstone. Blackstone, I, I'm so glad you came. Tell me, how much of that is true? All of it. The zombies? I saw them, Alan. I felt their cold hands on my arms. I saw them. How did you get there, Blackstone? Remember, Rhoda said if she didn't come back by noon, it would mean the zombies had got her. But she was just joking. That's what I thought, too. But she didn't come back. I got worried, and then some of the natives came down to the village bearing the body of a man who had fallen off that cliff. He was dead. And the natives had said that he came running out of the castle and fell over the cliff, and that they had heard drums beating slowly. And after he had fallen, the drums beat fast. They claimed they had seen figures who had turned back as the drums beat it up. I had a feeling that there was some connection between those drums and the death. And also, Rhoda's vanishing. I had found a mechanical drum in the effect of the old magician, and I took it with me, substituting it for the one the deaf mute generally played. And the mute couldn't hear that the drum didn't speed up when he beat it faster. Do you really believe that those people were zombies? Oh, Alan, I don't know what to believe. There were people there, I know that. Maybe they were zombies, maybe they were poor souls who had lost their minds, maybe they were servants who were drugged, I don't know. All either of us know is that the magic drum saved her, and so another mystery was solved by magic. Yes, Alan. Now, Alan, here's a trick with a box of matches, a box of penny matches that are really magical. Well, I don't see anything magical so far. You will in a moment. Now, let's slide the drawer open and see which is the top side. That's the top side. I, I see the matches. Good. I'll take a few out and push the drawer shut again. Now, let's see. About uh, how full would you say the box was? About half full. I saw the matches, too. Half a box is just about enough. I don't think I could magnetize any more. What do you mean, magnetize them? Matches are made out of wood. <laughs> They're not magnetic. Ah, I see that you two aren't up on modern science. Very well. Watch. First, I turn the box over. So now the drawer is upside down. Clever girl, Rhoda. Now, what will happen if I remove the drawer? Why, well, the matches will fall out of it, of course. Your turn for the top of the class, Alan, even though you're wrong. We magicians have learned how to defy the law of gravitation. Now, one. Well, you've taken the drawer out upside down, but the matches don't fall from it. Well, maybe they're glued in. Oh, but they can, Alan. Didn't you hear Blackstone rattle the matches a few moments ago? Why, so he did. And I'll do more. I'll pick up a loose match from the table here, put it up underneath the inverted drawer. And it stays there, like the rest. Exactly. Now, here's another loose match. Up into the drawer, the magnetism grips it. And it stays. I'll try one more, only I'm afraid it'll be one too many. Ah, huh. yes, there they go. Oh, say, those matches weren't stuck. It must have been magnetism that held them. Well, think it over, Rhoda. And if you can't give a better answer, 
I'll be back to tell you how it was done. I've examined the matchbox and those matches, but there's nothing wrong with any of them. You've examined all of them? Well, I've looked them over, most of them. Uh, what about this one? Well, that's just a broken match. Most every matchbox has a few. But this is the one that did the trick. First, uh, let's put those matches into the box. All right. Uh, and now for the short match. Here's where it was originally, Rhoda. Why, you're wedging it across the center of the drawer, and it's just long enough to fit. And it holds the matches in place, even though they're loose enough to shake. But why didn't Alan and I see that wedge when you opened the drawer with the top side up? Because I only opened it halfway. Oh. I turned the box over before I drew the drawer completely out. And then the matches stayed. And you even poked a few more up into the drawer. Yes, but at last I pushed up one too many. Yes, I remember, and the matches fell. Because I knocked the wedge loose so they would fall. Well... There are the matches all over the table. All demagnetized. And here's the matchbox, ready to be examined. Just try that trick yourself and you'll learn how good it is. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of Crime in the Stars and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. (laughs) 